long walk, the long lead up from the other part of Swaggle Hoss's house. Say that five times fast, Swaggle Hoss's house. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video with Swaggle Hoss. Selling after the movie. Selling after the movie. A strategy so bold, so different, so unique that I had to leave my door open for the very first time in this video. That is right. We are in upside down land now in the comic book market. We're now books like Thor 134 can sell for more after a movie. Truly incredible. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video with Swaggle House. And in this video, we need to talk about how Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, after its week two, is making a lot of money still. Which means word of mouth is doing very, very well. And even more so than just box office for the movies. We actually have situations where the comic books are actually increasing in sales related to that film. Who to thunk it? People go into a movie, they watch a movie, they enjoy the movie, and then they think to themselves, hey, that would actually be cool if I owned a Thor 134, first appearance of the High Evolutionary. Can you believe it? So in this video, we gotta talk about this, talk about what's going on with the numbers in the box office, do a little bit of a market report, see what's kind of moving out there as far as Guardians of the Galaxy related keys are concerned, and then ask ourselves the question, do we think that this momentum can carry over into Secret Invasion. But before I get into it, if you guys could drop me a like, comment, subscribe, if you're enjoying the content, help support the channel, do one of those things, I appreciate it. But let's get into this video here today. Now, it was just last week where I had made a video being a little bit facetious as I do here on the channel where I made the claim, does anybody care? Does anybody care about Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3? Well, not really. I mean, at the time, I think that, that was sort of fair to say. There was little movement in the market, the box office, you know, although it was a good showing at the box office for week one, it wasn't like a great showing. And I think that, that you know, again, these things are sort of delayed, right? You know, people coming off of Ant-Man, not very happy about it. They're not going to be very excited going into Guardians 3. But then Guardians 3 comes out. It's a good movie. People enjoy it. And then word of mouth gets around. And then people actually go to weekend two, which is where we are Today, box office, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 stays strong for a superhero movie with 60.5 million. Book Club 2 misses Mark. I'm just going to read a little bit of this. Disney's Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 was victorious again at the domestic box office, adding 60 or 60.5 million in its second weekend of release. Ticket sales dropped by 49% from its debut. Now, just to break it down, 49% is really not that much. It's not that much at all. Marking impressive hold, at least for a superhero movie, according uh, across more than 30 Marvel entries, only 2018's Black Panther was down to 45% and 2011's Thor was down 47%. Oh, that's a kind of a interesting stat for Thor that it only dropped by 40, 47%. But, you know, I think the drop is a good indication of what where these movies stood, where Black Panther obviously was sort of a cultural event. And so everybody, you know, needed to see it. 2011 Thor, maybe it kind of came under the radar and then it was able to have a great second weekend, uh, similar to kind of what Guardians is doing here. Have, um, let me carry on, have enjoyed second weekend holes. By comparison, recent MCU movies such as Ant-Man, The Wasp, Quantum Man, Doctor Strange, and Thor, Love and Thunder declined by nearly 70% in their sophomore outings. So that is something that is really, really interesting. Again, I bring this up to talk about the state of the comic book market and the positive word of mouth that is essentially going around for this movie and as it relates to comic books is actually trickling over into the comic book market. Now, this is the trending 20 list of Key Collector, which of course are, you know, the books that have moved the most in terms of volume over the last week. But I just kind of want to show you because last, you know, time we talked about this before the debut of the movie, uh, we, we were mentioning how there were some books on there and, you know, again, increase in sales, hard to determine what that really means, but it is very, very rare that you would see books show up after a movie's release. I mean, it can happen, it does happen, but generally speaking, you know, I think that this time is a little bit different. Here we have Captain Marvel 16, first cameo of Phyla Vell. Uh, we've certainly talked about the Phyla Vell book before the first full appearance, which is also 
on the list, Captain Marvel 17, but now we're also getting the cameo appearance as well. We got Marvel premiere number one, first him as Adam Warlock. We have Thor 134, which of course is the first appearance of the High Evolutionary, and that's the one I actually really want to focus on, where we're seeing a 217% increase in copies sold. Again, that's only twice as many, but still pretty impressive to see it specifically in a villain book, no less, which again, you know, we've had discussions on this channel before about villain books. Now, if we go to cover price, we're even seeing the Cocoon book getting some love here in the number 10 slot. The actual uh, Fantastic Four 67, which, you know, no offense to you Cocoon fans, but I've really never been a fan of this book. And I would actually say that Adam Warlock was maybe the weakest part of the movie. I mean, you know, I, I, don't, I don't mind him. I, I want to see more of him. But, you know, generally speaking, um, you know, he, I wouldn't say that he was the shining star. We didn't even see the Cocoon in the film, yet still on cover prices, top 10, the Cocoon book is selling out there in the market. And again, I think that this is really interesting new territory that we are going into right now in the 2023 market with you know the decline of the MCU or at least the lack of interest in a lot of these movies and specifically the books and how FOMO gets related to you know that, that being a driving factor here in the market. But we're seeing Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 already in its second week making more total box office money than that of Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania, which again, I think suggests two things. One, the Guardians of the Galaxy brand is simply just bigger than that of the Ant-Man brand. But I think more importantly and more obviously, number two, I just think that audiences definitely enjoyed this movie. We're way more invested in this movie with the characters. And I think that it is not a stretch to say that, you know, executionally, it was better executed, better directed, better written, all of those things. So I think that, that is really interesting to see that that is having an effect in the market of comic books. And I definitely want to break down what's going on in the market for Thor 134, because I do think that there are some interesting takeaways that we can have, you know, in correlation to what's going on with the positive reception of this movie. But before we do that, let's take a moment to talk about the sponsor of this video, Torpedo Comics. Now, for those who don't know, Torpedo Comics is one of the best comic stores in the country. They are based out of Las Vegas, Nevada, but have locations in the Southern California area as well. But if you can't make it out to their store, you can go to their online store, torpedocomics.com, where they have great mystery boxes, raw comics, CGC slabs, and trading cards if you're into that sort of thing. They even have this great search function here where you can search for all of these Guardians of the Galaxy keys, like this one, Thor 165, which is another book, first full appearance of him that we haven't quite talked about, but also could relate to the topic of this video, which is, of course, the increase in sales after the movie. And the best part about torpedocomics.com is if you use my promo code SWAGGLEHOSS, which you'll see in the description, you'll be able to save 10% off on your order. What's not to love about that. I want to say thank you to Torpedo Comics for sponsoring this video, and let's get back into our main topic. All right, one book I wanted to focus on here was, of course, Thor 134, first appearance of the High Evolutionary, a villain who I thought was fantastic in the film. I mean, I think that it's actually pr pretty much a consensus, at least from, you know, all the reviews, all the people I've sort of talked to, that everyone really, really liked the portrayal of the High Evolutionary. And, you know, the fact that we didn't see him actually die on camera, to me, infers that this character is coming back. I think that, you know, Marvel, if they're smart, they're going to take more, uh, you know, essentially polls of what fans react to in certain movies and go in that direction instead of sort of forcing directions, uh, you know, upon the audiences that, you know, maybe people are going to reject. So it feels like this character is probably going to be tied back into, you know, I don't know, some celestial plotline or Galactus later on down the line because he, in fact, does have a lot of connections to Galactus. Now, one of the things I wanted to point out was the fact that just look at the volume of sales for this book after the release of the movie versus just before the release of the movie. And I think that that story is very, very telling. Where if we go in here and we see like just in the, the month of May, you know, you can see how many sales, the, the movie Guardians of the Galaxy came out on May 5th, if you guys don't remember. So we, we're seeing right here just a page, you know, we have like a handful of sales uh, leading up the week, leading up to the movie, uh, really not that many. I mean, it's, it's specifically, you know, when we're talking about, you know, the hype factor, like here in this 10 day stretch, you're seeing sort of one page of sales versus, you know, if you go to after the movie, you know, starting on five, six, you see one and two pages of sales, which again, kind of goes in line to what we were talking about with the, uh, you know, key collector stats and the increase in volume of transactions going on. So I think that, you know, we're seeing that people are actually coming out of the movie theater being like, oh, you know what? The high revolutionary was actually pretty cool. And if I just just kind of pick out a random grade right here of the 7.5. Obviously, this book has been massively correcting due to kind of macroeconomic pressures, which again, I've talked about in you know, some of the index videos and things like that. But, you know, these sort of cultural, pop cultural things can also have effects, at least in short term demand for a lot of these books. And you can see the 7.5 right here, you know, somebody bought this at 275. 
auction before the movie was actually at 298, but then it was lower before that, 264, 259, 300. So again, while we're obviously not seeing record highs, what I do think that we're seeing when you go across the grades and go across you know, some of the values of these books is we're finally seeing like the stop gap being put on a lot of these books where people are actually thinking, you know, that act, that character is actually really cool. Maybe I should pick that up uh, since now it's such a good deal. And actually, let me pull that graph right back up. Uh, this was always one of those books that was kind of interesting because it did get elevated so much back in 2019 due to the fact that, you know, there was a lot of rumors about the high evolutionary all the way back when. So really, you know, this is one of those kind of eternal situations where, you know, some of the books that got inflated in 2018 and 2019, even before COVID, uh, got a unrealistic boost because of their movie rumors. And that's a lot of the reasons why some of these books are correcting even lower than their 2020 price. Uh, you know, because some of the sales for this one in 2020 were actually at the $300 range. And now we're already, you know, effectively right around that same price point. And you would think that, you know, organic inflation would increase the value of it. But I think it's because it got elevated by too much. But it is really interesting to think about that. You know, the values of these books, the demand for these things after the movie, you know, because people actually liked it and thinking about, OK, is this going to lead to momentum? for Secret Invasion. Secret Invasion, you know, the trailer looks pretty good as well. You know, who's who's to say that it's going to be a good movie? I mean, you know, jury is still out there. Uh, we, we can't say that, you know, the MCU has turned it around. In fact, I think that there's probably a lot of people that don't think the MCU has turned it around. But as far as the behaviors of the comic book market, that's really, you know, what I'm trying to drill home in this video is I do think that that's going to lead, you know, back to a little bit of that speculation, a little bit of excitement, people thinking about, you know, Maria Hill, people thinking about, oh, maybe Kazar is going to show up, people thinking about, you know, this uh, Madame Hydra and how it's going to play a role into, you know, uh, Secret Invasion, Super Scroll, uh, Talos, Quake, Daisy Johnson. I think a lot of these books are actually going to feel that boost and that momentum going into Secret Invasion simply due to the fact that Guardians of the Galaxy was so exciting for a lot of people. But that is all I have for this video. That was me just sort of talking about the market report. Feels like people were excited. The demand for some of these books related to the movies are is actually out there, kind of like it was, you know, all the way back in the day. And it could be interesting to see uh, what the temporary effects will be on something like Secret Invasion, which comes out in just about a month. And again, if that movie is good, then I'm sure people will carry over that momentum into the Marvels and, well, may or may not be disappointed. Anyways, that's all I got for this video. Let me know what you guys think. What did you guys think about Guardians of the Galaxy 3? Did you like it? Does it make you want to buy some Incredible Hulk 271s? Let me know in the comments. Anyways, like, comment, subscribe. See you on the next video.